Hey folks, and welcome to a video that will probably get my nut spiked to a wall on Reddit's TF2 page. I've been playing TF2 for a while. Since 2012, August the 12th is my first achievement that I can track. And while 95% of my hours are in MVM, mod servers like Saxton Hale, or sometimes even idle servers, because there actually was a time where you could idle and get all your item drops in less than one day. I always noticed the updates and what they brought to the game, and I would always give these updates a go to see if I would like them. So, here are my top 10 most memorable updates, whether that be good or bad. Number 10. The Love and War update. Where do I begin with this one? It added a boatload of cosmetics, a lot of them even in a set form, 15 taunts, 29 achievements, and to top the icing on the cake, 5 weapons. Dear god, I can't believe how much of a big deal this update was. People were in outrage, Star Underscore was still making videos and covered this update and the weapons he wanted to do. Of which, the TIE Turner has to be my favorite. Until it got nerfed so hard that now I just use the splendid screen. I just cannot be bothered with this thing anymore. Number 9. Scream Fortress 2012 Edition. The 4th Annual Halloween Special. You know what I like? Cooperating with team members to reach a goal we all fight for. Preferably against advanced AI. Not just any horde mode you see in games where it's a fight until you drop scenario like Call of Duty Zombies, but a goal you work towards. And get a victory when you reach the ending of it. And this update added Marasmus. While I think Monoculus from the previous year is fun to fight, he simply does not have as many fun mechanics to fight as Marasmus does. Like using the bomb head, for example, or the hide and seek. While hide and seek isn't really fun, because I, I can just never find him, he has a headshot mechanic, area of effect spells that launch you in the air and put you aflame, and even being able to get backstabbed for some extra damage. I just love me a good co-op game mode. Only sad part is, back there there was no truce going on, so Red and Blue could still fight. Making it hard to kill Marasmus thanks to those that just wanted to ruin your chance at getting the Disgeebus 2.0. Number 8. Smismus 2013. While 2012 had a Smismus update disguised as the Mecha update, the 2013 one felt like the first real Smismus update I've been a part of. And it felt really festive, with a lot of themed cosmetics, festive weapons, and crashed the market. And changing the Conqueror to something we would actually use now. Yeah, before it was just a buff banner having no use until you can deploy it finally for that sweet health on hit. Making Smithsmith 2013 my most memorable Smithsmith update as of now. Number 7. The end of the line update. Ugh. This one left a sour taste with me. I absolutely adored the SFM animation that was made. It was gorgeous. But perhaps it was teased too early for its own good. Because the trailer hyped everyone up so much that we thought we'd get new game modes, new weapons, new cosmetics, new taunts, new maps. There was almost no limits to what people were expecting. So what did this update actually add? 23 cosmetics, 4 unusual effects, a duck journal, and a taunt. So, what was good from this update? The animation was solid. And the too confusing for new players meme was born from this. Yep, this, this was the update that spawned this meme, because the map that was later on still added to the game was apparently too confusing for new players. This was the first of the updates to leave me majorly disappointed, in a way that I left the game alone for a while until I felt interested again to pick it up. Number 6. Speaking of disappointing updates, the robotic Boogaloo one seemed awesome at first. So, what did it do for TF2? It added 57 cosmetics that were all robo versions on ones that already existed and 10 unusual effects. 
yeah, this update died out pretty fast. Because the robo crates dropped frequently at the start. It wasn't until later that people realized that the robo cosmetics aren't that great. They were hyped at first because it was new, but we all caught up to how inferior they looked to the originals and prices started going below their normal counterparts. Number 5. The Mecha Update. Like I said, 2012's Christmas update in disguise, it didn't feel quite like Christmas, but it sure as hell felt like it was awesome to kick some robot ass again. Adding 10 Adult Swim themed cosmetics, 18 co normal cosmetics, 9 festive weapons, and 3 new weapons. Introducing the Rescue Ranger, Vaccinator, and Loose Cannon, and the Big Rock Man vs. Machine map. While not the best M MVM update in the world, it sure was a hell of a lot better than the two earlier on the list. Cause those three new weapons changed the game forever. Number 4. The Invasion Update. Spawning the We Are In The Babe meme. Adding 4 reskins to the game, 17 cosmetics, 1 taunt, 9 unusual effects, 4 maps, one of which was a reskin of 2 fort, and contracts based around the new maps. I adored this update. Thanks to its fresh map design, hilarious game mode on Watergate, pretty cool map design on Probed, and just the feeling of overall freshness. While the cosmetics did not really impress me, the map Probed and Watergate, more than anything, was worth the entire update. Number 3. The Two Cities Update. Adding three maps, two of which are Manhattan and Rottenburg for MVM, and the other being CP Snakewater, which I didn't care for. Nerfing the Babyface's blaster to a point where I don't want to use it anymore. Adding 21 achievements, the introduction of killstreak kits, which made the entire community more competitive to get them high numbers, only they cared about. The revive boxes and the shield for Medic, making Medic a meta pick for MVM out of the blue. Adding rocket specialist upgrades to the soldier. And last but certainly not least, added the Australiums to the game. Something that made people turn its head towards MVM, and to this day, I still prefer Australiums over unusual weapons, to be honest. Now, if only they would release an update to buff the sniper and spy for MVM so the meta can go fluff itself once more. Number 2. Meet your match. You all saw this one coming, didn't you? Maybe expected it on number one? Hm. Well, let's dive into it. What did Meet Your Match do? It added some cosmetics, Disgaea promotional items, four taunts, keyless crates, pastime as a fully supported game mode, four new maps, made the pyro the medic's worst nightmare, nerfed the boots, made engineer teleporters actually manageable, gave the medibeam the ability to run as fast as their patient, which previously was exclusive to the quick fix, and made the spy run slightly slower than the scout, rebalanced a bunch of weapons I cannot be arsed to dive into, cause it made me quite mad, removed quick play, mm, added two hours of coding that made up the matchmaking of casual and competitive, which was a total mess. This update ruined for me what was potentially the biggest attraction to TF2, the freedom to play the game as anything you wanted. Because I hear so many people say that this update made them feel pressured to make them play the game seriously rather than do whatever the hell they want. Because casual is just diet competitive. And making TF2 lose its identity of that shooter where everybody is welcome. Because now it feels like it wants its identity to be another competitive shooter. Besides, the competitive mode in the game doesn't even do proper matchmaking. You could be a plat player or whatever and be matched up against a stack of gold while your allies are the team that just never could. Making this TF2 update standing out as the absolute worst in my memory. Just add quick play and keep these two if you really have to. It's never a good idea to take away options. Take note from this. And the number one most memorable TF2 update for me is... You didn't think I ended on a bad note, would you? 
Remember when I said I loved cooperative games? Well, MVM is a rough sketch of what I would want to see in TF2 of this sort. It's Horde mode, but it has an ending to build up to. It flat out tells you what will happen in each wave, but still remains challenging. The rewards were shitty back then, but we didn't have the concept of Australians yet. Back then, it was all about them gold, diamond, and blood weapons. And I, to this day, still have and use Carbonado Bot Killer Scattergun that I earned on my seventh tour. And it will only get replaced by an Australian Scattergun if that sucker will just whatever drop for me. It started out with three maps, Decoy, Coal Town, and Manworks. This was all we had. There was no Wave 666 yet. All we had was Normal, Intermediate, Advanced and Expert, with 35 achievements and content in the future of this update, and still being the only game mode I still loyally play, even to this day. This game mode looked like it was here to stay. But after two cities, the game mode didn't get any content anymore as of the upload date of this video, which is almost four years. So those were my picks for the top 10 most memorable updates of TF2. Did you enjoy it? Let me know in the comment section below. What was your most memorable update, either positive or negative? And if this video proves to be popular enough, I will take feedback from the likes and comments. Dislikes will be ignored. So if you didn't like it, comment about it and tell me why. See you all next time, and there will be a next time. Super sexy fan art. <laughs>